All right, Shalom, we're in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 12. 7 to 12. <clears throat> it says, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. To him who knocks, it will be open. Or who is there among you who if he, who if his son asks him for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, who will give him a serpent? Um, it says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Me and my wife watched a documentary at some point, I forget when, but it was this year, on mass murderers and, and men who murdered, murdered, hundreds of people in his lifetime, but he was an awesome father, awesome husband. But my man was a murderer. He was an assassin, not an assassin. Is it an assassin? No, assassin was illegal. This guy was illegally, like he was, he, he would kill people, get paid for it. Assassin's not legal. <laughs> who, was, who was saying something? I was. d what was you saying? How about the Iceman? The Iceman? Richard Kuklinski. I guess his name is probably yeah you're probably naming a, a guy that did it right you're talking about yeah probably the one i was talking about <laughs> i don't remember the guy's name but he was like a great husband nobody would have ever known he was a great guy to his daughters you know and here yahoo is, is given a perfect human example even evil people know how to take care of their children and give them what they're asking for now, a good, good parent doesn't just give them every single time. It's just a general principle in the sense of, you know, you want to you wanna take care of your kids. You want them to be taken care of, not spoiled, taken care of, all right? And he's using that example. It's so true. If you, being evil, every, and when I, when I read that, I just think of that guy. I was like, wow, that's great. I can't believe it. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you desire for men to do to you, you shall also do to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Wow, what a way to end that. Milo. I have a few uh, cross-references. Well, actually, quite a few. Um, for that first portion, well, one, let me just say this. I love that Messiah talks of our, our Yahuwah as our father. Like, that's, that's an aspect when we think we can come to our father. And, I, like, you know, some people haven't had fathers growing up. But, you know, what would you think of, of having a father figure in your life to be able to approach, to be able to ask? And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. Sometimes I'm guilty of not asking because I'm like, why would Yahuwah even consider me? You know, why would he even? but he's a good father. So I just want to go through some um, uh, things in the Tanakh that reminds us of even our forefathers asking things of you who are things that we should seek for. So in Deuteronomy 32, verse seven, it says, remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations, ask your father, this is not talking about Yahuwah, this is talking about your earthly father, and he will show you your elders and they will tell you. And when I thought about this one, I wish, we will, for me, for example, I can't ask my father of the things of the scripture, the things of old to remind me of the covenants, but our forefathers were able to do that at some point, and may we be able to do that for our, our next generation. Um, Yahusha 9.14, this is an example of when they did not seek the counsel and ask Yahuwah um, what to do. It says, oops, wrong chapter, sorry, 9.14. This is when a people close by the land came and pretended like they were from a, a far off. And it says in 914, and the men took of their victuals and asked not 
at the mouth of Yahuwah. And Yahushua made peace with these people that were actually close by that they were supposed to destroy. So when we don't ask the counsel of Yahushua, uh, Yahuwah, then we don't get a, we don't do the right thing. Judges 1-1, one, one, it says, is that right? I hope it's right. Now, after the death of Yahushua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked, yes, asked Yahuwah, saying, who shall go up against the Canaanites? first to fight against them. These are just examples of our forefathers asking things of Yahuwah. Mm. When, when do we move? Who are we fighting against? Who mm. should go up first? Um, the same way nowadays, we need to be asking him each step that we're supposed to be doing something. Nice. Also in Judges 20, verse 18. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of Elohim and asked counsel of Elohim and said, which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And Yahuwah said, Yehuda shall go up first. They had a fight against their own um, because the children of Benjamin did something very disgraceful. Or 1 Samuel. I, I, I love this one. 117. It says, um, what's her name? Hannah? Hannah was, was praying for, for a child. And it says in verse 17, then Eli answered and said, go in peace and the Elohim of Israel grant you your petition that you have asked of him so prayers being able to pray before him and my last two on this portion of asking will be in proverbs proverbs 2 1 to 9 says my son if you will receive my words and hide my commandments with you so that you incline your ear unto wisdom and apply your heart to understanding Yea, if you cry after knowledge mm. and lift up your voice for understanding mm. if you seek because he says we need to seek right if you seek her as silver and search for her as hid treasures, mm -hmm. then shall you understand the fear of Yahuwah mm. and find the knowledge of Elohim. Mm. Wisdom, knowledge, fear of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. Yes. For Yahuwah gives wisdom. Mm -hmm. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keeps the paths of judgment and preserves the way of his saints. Then shall you understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. You know, like when I think about this asking, seeking, knocking, I'll be very honest. The first thing I think of are my natural needs, my natural desires um, as a woman, as a wife, whatever it may be. But then when I look in the word, even more so, we shouldn't just ask for the, the things. We need to be seeking the kingdom first and all other things will be added. So seeking wisdom seeking what is your will mm -hmm. um what do you think is right what do you think, do is, you right? think is wrong mm -hmm. seeking after his righteousness trying to gain his understanding and it says he is a good father if you ask he will give it and honestly i see that i think that's why we're here right now because we ask yahuwah you know dakota mm -hmm. said earlier show me your truth my last year of being at international house of prayer mm -hmm. my main prayer was god how holy is holy how holy can we go? How deep is deep? Take me deeper. These are the kind of things I was praying. He's like, all right. You want to know what? You want to know? You want to know? What yeah, holy is? I want to know the standard. Take me higher. There's got to be more. Okay. I'll show you what holy is. I'll give you a new definition of holy. Actually, <laughs> what I do. Um, and can I read one more? Sure. It's one to eight. Uh, one to seventeen in Proverbs. Proverbs eight. One to seventeen. One to one to seventeen. It's so much good. Woman, <laughs> my goodness. You want to get some? Go okay, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It says, "Does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She stands in mm. the top of high places by the way and the places of the paths. She cries at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart." Here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth will speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understands and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I wisdom dwell of prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of Yahuwah is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, 
and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsels mine, sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and noble, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Uh, doesn't there a scripture in the New Testament that says Messiah is the wisdom of God? Do you want to call us a Sure. <laughs> 24. All right. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 24. <clears throat> I'll start at 23. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 23. It says, but we preach Messiah crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews, the Yahudim and foolishness to Gentiles. Okay. That's our gospel. That's our testimony, guys. That's what we should be preaching. We should always be preaching Messiah crucified, the son of God crucified for our sins. Verse 24, but to those who are called both from the Jews and the Greeks, Messiah is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Beautiful. He's always been the wisdom of God. Even back in Proverbs chapter eight, Yahusha, Messiah, was the wisdom of God. So when they were seeking Yahuwah's wisdom, they were seeking Yahusha. They were seeking the heart of Yahuwah. They were seeking the word of Yahuwah. There's no separation there. So definitely, uh, a lot of people like to read this passage we're reading in Matthew 7 to ask for materialistic things that they want, which you can, you can do that too. Daddy's a good daddy, okay? He provides for us. We want a house, ask for a house, ask for a car. He knows what we need. We can ask for these things. But some people preach this, a prosperity gospel, and they go on and just asking for more materialistic things when really one of the first things we should be asking for and the most important thing we should be asking for is wisdom, knowledge, and the fear of Yahuwah. Um, I got some cross-references on that. Uh, James chapter 1. Verse five to six, James chapter one, verse five to six. I see you derail. I'll call you in a bit. James chapter one, verse five to six. It says, but if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. Let him ask with conviction. Let him ask with assurance of, of evidence of, of, what is it? Evidence of things unseen, hope for, the things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Let him have conviction of what he can't see yet, that Yahuwah will be able to provide what he's asking for when you're asking for wisdom. Let him ask in faith without doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. So that's one. 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. 1 John chapter 3, verse 22 says, So whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. One of the things I used to hear uh, even when I was in, in the International House of Prayer, the last ministry I was part of in Christianity, I would hear a lot of things like, we can't please God. Like, don't, we don't need to please you anymore. There's no need to try to strive to please him. You know what I mean? We're, we're already his children and he loves us, so stop striving. These are the kind of messages I would hear a lot, and it would frustrate me. You can ask my wife. Even before we were married, we were just, you know, like courting whatever, and every time it would be mentioned, I'd be like, oh! There it goes again, babe. I can't stand when they do that. It's so crippling, crippling handicapping. Like, empower us to be holy. Like, I used to get mad. We're so broken. We're worth nothing. We're all but filthy rags. And they would like to use all the scriptures that shows how broken and weak we are, right? But they don't want to. They don't want to share scripture that shows how how much strength we have in Yahusha, and we can do all things through Messiah who strengthens us. You know. But here, 
you know? So yes, let's ask, but let's be obedient as well, which will help in your request. Why should Yahuwah, and he does, I don't know why, Yahuwah knows all things, why he gives things to people who are disobedient. Sometimes he has mercy and he still provides for people who are walking in sin. Maybe it's Satan giving it to him, because Satan can give all materialistic things. Satan can provide, y'all. Don't get it twisted. Satan was offering Yahushua the kingdoms of the world. I don't think it's very difficult for Satan to provide some money and some cars and materialism, some bread and some food on the table. Satan can provide that too, as long as you keep serving Satan or serving yourself. So there's a, there's a deal there, but it's better to ask being obedient to Yahuwah. There's a difference between the blessings through obedience versus blessings while in disobedience. I'd rather be getting blessed by Yahuwah in my obedience, you know, and here's a scriptural proof. And there's people out there, they preach, oh, don't, don't, works-based salvation, you're trying to earn your way, you're trying to please God. Yeah, I'm trying to please God. First John chapter 3, verse 22 tells us to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And in Romans chapter 8, it's impossible to please God if you hate God's law. So you got to love his law, you got to love his commandments, you got to do his commandments, and you keep pleasing him. Don't be like the humans, natural mankind that gets married and they think they've arrived. That's it. We're married. I'm good. My wife loves me. I did all the things. We went on dates. I gave her flowers. I'm good. Put up the sale now. I can just chill. That's it. No more romance needed. I don't got to chase her no more. She already loves me. That's not true. You got to continue to put oil in that lamp. You got to keep, keep that fire fresh. So keep things going. Keep the love going. Keep pleasing your spouse. Keep loving one another. My wife gets on me, my wife gets on me all the time about that. I introduced her to the five love languages, a Christian book. I would, sometimes I'm like, I wish I would have never introduced you to that book. Because she brings it back on me all the time. That's a good book. Good Christian book. This is a, one of the only Christian uh, advertisements I will ever do is, is uh, referring, referring people to the five love languages by Dr. Chap. It's a great book. Great book. Everybody has a different love language. Everybody receives love differently. Quality time might be more important to somebody else than words of affirmation. Right? Quality time might be more important. Just you sitting here with me, watching a film, watching something, or reading a book, or going out in the park, going for a walk, playing a game. Just you being by my side, you watching me play basketball, you watching me shoot some hoops is exciting to me. You know? Some words of affirmation. Some people, you got to give them words. You got to tell them how much you love them and how beautiful they look today and all this other stuff. Them. Without, without them asking, <laughs> hey, can you tell me I'm beautiful? I'm like, why'd you ask me? Because I haven't been at, I haven't been saying it. So yeah, same thing with Yahuwah. It's the same way. I digress. First John chapter five, same book. First John chapter five, verse 14. It says, this is the boldness. First John chapter five, verse 14. This is the boldness which we have toward him that if we ask anything according to his will, some people forget that part, according to his will, that's something we should be adding in. Father, if it be your will. I've heard some prosperity preachers say, don't pray like that. Don't pray if, there's no ifs, if it be your will, because then that's doubt. Then that's doubt, that's going against, that's going against the James chapter we just read. This says, don't ask anything without doubting. So don't put an if in there. I'm putting the if in there because they put an if in there. You know what I'm saying? Yahusha said if. Let your will be done, not mine. If it be, you know, take this cup from me. So Yahusha can do it. I'm sure it's okay for me to do it. Want to make sure it's in alignment with his. All right, I digress. That's all I got for uh, asking. Uh, derail. 
you're up. Uh, yeah, forgot where I was going. Uh, <laughs> that first Corinthians, you read chapter, uh, chapter one, verse 13 as well, didn't you? Uh, that was earlier. That uh, Messiah is the wisdom and the power of God. Was it First Corinthians verse thirteen, and then you read First Corinthians verse twenty four or twenty eight. One of them. Oh, I'm aware I got thirteen, but thirteen is a good one to uh, share to Christians as well. I can use that when I go talk to Christians. What does it say, brother? Come on, feed us. As the Messiah, Listen, you got people listening all over the world. International stage is the international station. You got people waiting to hear what you got to say. Uh, as the Messiah been divided, was Sheol or Paul impaled for you, or were you immersed in the name of Sheol or Shaul? Paul, negative. I was immersed in the name of Yahusha, the Messiah. Amen. Like I say, you know, Paul was misunderstood, but. I always take Messiah's word over Paul's any day, but I believe Paul was speaking the law. He was speaking that the law is still here. He wasn't speaking against it. He just misunderstood. Keep going. That's all I have to say about that. That's all I got to say. That's all she wrote. Well, bottom line is Messiah trumps Paul. Yes. Messiah trumps Paul. I was not immersed in the name of Messiah, or Paul. Okay. Yep. Paul was not impaled or right. crucified, however you want to call it. The Messiah was. Mm -hmm. the Messiah walked Torah. Absolutely. The Messiah, Torah. The Messiah learned Torah. Exactly what he did. And we should walk as he walked, because that's what the scripture says. Walk as he walked. Yep. Right? There's no scripture that says once he died, Torah died. Find that in scripture for me. Yep. Paul said, yeah, no, nah, good one, man. That's when they go, Paul said, I'm going to go 1 Corinthians 13. Paul yeah, also gonna... said that he is not the Messiah. <laughs> They're going to go, Colossians 2, the ordinances that were written against us was nailed to the cross. There it is right there. The ordinances written against us. That's it's not the sin. Torah. That's the curses, buddy. That's the sin. The sin is against us. That's the consequences. Hallelujah. All right. Um, <laughs> he's fired up. Ezzy and then uh, Dakota. So it kind of goes back to what you uh, and I think Milo were saying about um, um, the gifts. That's what kind of stands out to me in, in this passage, what the gifts are, whether it's his will, um, wisdom, knowledge, belief. These are, I mean, when you think of a father and a child, it's not always the material things. It could be, you know, punishment. And that could be a gift over, over death, you know, over harm. So I have two references. Um, one, they're both in Romans, um, talking about this gift. In Romans 5, um, I'm going to read 15 to... Uh, 15 to 17 it says but the favorable gift is not favorable gift is not like the trespass for if by the one man's trespass many died much more the favor of Yahuwah and the gift in favor of the one man Yahusha HaMashiach overflowed to many and the favorable gift is not as by is not as by one having sinned for indeed the judgment was of one to condemnation but the favorable gift is of many trespasses unto righteousness for if by the trespass of the one, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the overflowing favor and the gift of righteousness shall reign in the life through the one, Yahushua HaMashiach. And then the other one is uh, Romans 6, uh, verse 23. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the favorable gift of Elohim is everlasting life in Mashiach, Yahushua, our Adon. So just want to bring emphasis on the gift. The gift can be... It can be the everlasting life, the good news, the gospel. <laughs> I see you, brother. Salvation is the first gift. Yes, as Yes. You shouldn't be asking for nothing of God if you ain't got salvation yet, if you ain't got eternal life. Yes. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Ezzy. I didn't mean to stop you. I, I just wanted to interject and agree with you on there. But I, I yeah, feel like I'm good. you had more. I'm good. You had more. Go ahead. 
I'm done. You're good. I'm done. Woo! Yeah, you shouldn't be asking for nothing. <laughs> be asking for nothing. <laughs> gifts. Yeah, I'm looking up the word gifts. There's a lot of places we can go with that. That was a good idea. Uh, Romans 12. Romans chapter 12, it says, um, verse 4, 12, 4, for even as we have many members in one body and all the members don't have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Messiah. Not dispensationalism, not two different bodies, not three different bodies, three different ecclesias, three different assemblies, three different covenants, two different covenants. There's one body in Messiah, and individually members of one another, having gifts differing according to the grace that was given to us. If prophecy, let's prophesy according to the portion of our faith. Prophecy is a legitimate gift. It's legitimate. I think it's still real, and it's still needed in the body. I heard it this way once. From a Christian, I'll give them credit for this one. The need for the prophetic gift in the assembly is so important because it gives the assembly the element of surprise. I'm going to break it down from a sports perspective. When you have a team and you study the other team's plays, you already know what they do on offense and defense. You, you know what they're doing ahead of time, which makes you a better candidate to defeat this team. But if you are able to do something that the enemy was not able to expect, you have the element of surprise which, which throws your enemy off. And that's what the gift of prophecy is able to do. People are able to, you know, see things come in and, and share things. And, it's and an advantage of being prepared. There's an advantage of being prepared. You know, these people that know about the end times and the signs in the sky and everything like that, these, these people are important. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, all these people, Joseph, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're lethal people because they're able to, they're, that's why they're, they're seers. They can see, they can hear Yahuwah, they can see into the future, they know what's coming versus, you know, a lot of us who don't have the gift, we, we can't see those things coming. So prophecy is very good. Prophecy is very good. Um, they're scary people to be around. They're weird, all right? They tend to be a little weird. They make us uncomfortable, all right? But we got to test them, and we got to see if the things that they're saying is legitimate and see if they come to pass. I also like seeing if they have a reputation. When people are claiming to prophesy something, I like to say, where's your resume? What prophecies have you said in the past that have come to pass? Do you have it on record? Do you have any witnesses? Those things are important to me. But anyway, it says prophesy according to your faith. Verse 7, or of service. Let's give ourselves to service. So some people are excellent at serving, just giving hospitality, just, yeah, we definitely know some people who outdo us, outdo us with service. It's crazy. Learn a lot from them. It's beautiful. Or he, or he who teaches. So people have a gift of teaching to his teaching. Or he who exhorts. I like exhortation. I think that's I think that's my gift. Like I'm not very teacher like. I don't see myself as being very organized and writing things up. But like if I was to listen to a sermon, I would give the critique. I would like to say this, let me add this to what was said. Let me, you know, I like to bring that little that's what I think exhortation is, unless I'm wrong. That's what I've been that's what I've been taught. Exhorting. Uh, he who gives, let him do it with generosity, the givers. He who rules with diligence, all right? These are your entrepreneurs, your bosses, uh, people who own things or, or, or uh, leaders in the assembly. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. We should all be showing mercy. Um, a lot of these things we have. So there's other gifts. Go to the Corinthians book. Uh, let's see. First Corinthians chapter 12 is the big chapter on gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. It says, now there are various kinds of gifts. I think it was an excellent idea, Ezzy, to hone in on the word gifts. It's like, why not? Definitely. That's definitely what we should do. If this chapter of Matthew is talking about 
gifts. Let me look it up. And then we might understand what are some things we should be praying for? What should we be asking Yahuwah for? You know, because again, some when I hear people talk on Matthew 7, I've heard a lot of just like, ask, okay, I got bills to get paid, or I got something coming up, or I got a job that I want, or, and these are good things too, you know, um, to ask Yahuwah to help you out in these areas. And I believe he does, or get in a car, or, or whatever, right? But there's some gifts within the scriptures that we should be praying into and asking, Yahuwah, what's my gift? You know what I mean? Uh, if it be your will, you know? I'd like to have this gift or whatever gift it is that you have for me, make it known. You know? And it specifies good gifts. It says yes. good gifts. So it's not just, I mean, good, good gifts can, can be different types of gifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Getting a car might not be good. So, you know, <laughs> it says various kinds of gifts, but the same spirit, various kinds of service, and the same Lord. Um, verse 9, to another faith, but the same spirit, and to another gifts of healings. In verse 9, gifts of healings by the same spirit. That's a gift. That's needed in the body. The gift of healing is needed in the body. Sometimes, you know, I think faith is more important than all of them. you got to have faith. But like many times when people get sick, sometimes the lack of getting healed is discouraging and that beats people up. It beats them up mentally and it beats them up spiritually. And uh, I've seen a lot of it in my life. Uh, you have something you want to say? No, I was going to say, I think, and then I think it's so beautiful because like, I see some of these in each person, but this is talk to me, this sounds like those who excel in it right like we're supposed to all be servants sure we're supposed yep. to all show mercy yeah we're supposed to all have faith right but there are those that we see that have a certain level and we shouldn't get jealous of them i'm not going to be patient that's not my gift. that's not my truth that's a fruit that's, that's a, a fruit, fruit. That's yes a fruit. it is it is <laughs> that fruit we all need to produce yes um but uh but i just think it's interesting it's like you know, we shouldn't get jealous of those who excel in these gifts. You know, you will give it to them, let them grow in it, and we'll find our, you know, find our niche. Skip down. Oh, derail. Derail. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, I wanted to read the Aramaic of that, First Corinthians 12. All right, go ahead. Uh, verse 4, but there are diversities of gifts. However, the spirit is one, and there are diversities of, diversities of ministries. However, the Lord Yahuwah is one, and there is a diversity of miracles, but God is one. And that one is again. Yeah, baby. And that one in the Greek is definitely one. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the achad versus yechad that you would get in the Hebrew. All right. If you skip down, same, chap same book, 1 Corinthians 12, same chapter, skip down to 28. It says, God has set some in the assembly. First, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. This, man's, this man is numbering them, all right? This must be important. Third, teachers. Then miracle workers. Then gifts of healings. Helps. Governments and various kinds of languages. We need this stuff. This stuff plays a role in the body. We need the structure. We need these gifts. We need them to function so that we can thrive and grow the way Yahuwah called us to. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all miracle workers? The answer is no. Verse 30, it says, do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with various languages? Do all interpret, but earnestly desire the best gifts. Moreover, I show a more excellent way to you. Yep. It says, if you are zealous for great gifts, I again shall show you a better way. Yep. 
<clears throat> Man, there's a lot to go on. I'm not going to go into it, but if you type in that word gift and you just do a word search, you can have some fun with that. That's great. That's great. Uh, where are we at? Matthew 7. We read 7 to 12. All right, cross references. You got more? Go ahead. Yeah. For verse 12, it says, Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men would do to you, do unto them, for this is the Torah and the prophets. And I just want to give some examples in the in the Tanakh um, that it's show very, this. I just want to say, with that verse 12, is very interesting. I think that verse 12 is from verse 1 all the way to 11. Usually when you have a therefore, it's a summary of what was said. And to me, it has to include verses 1 to 6, which is about judging mm -hmm. and not being hypocrites, you know, not judging hypocritically. So, and then it interestingly goes into asking Yahuwah to give and giving good things. And so to end with 12, to summarize, it was very interesting for me today. I just, I just wanted to say that, that it had to do with the uh, judging part as well. But nice. Go ahead. Because we will think that I would want someone to righteously judge me. If I am in sin, a loving brother or sister would be able to correct me. Give Why? me what I deserve. Right? Show me or show me mercy. <laughs> we had a brother that just said that today while giving his testimony. That's one of the prayers he was praying to Yahuwah. When he deserved Yahuwah's judgment, he said, I deserve it. I'm not going to ask you to not give me what I deserve. Show me you know? your but Yahuwah, instead of giving him bread, he gave him a meal. Mm. <laughs> he gave him a meal. He showed mercy on this brother. Yeah, that's good. So let's see some examples in Tanakh of what we can do for our brothers and sisters, right? Or what one should do for another. In Leviticus 19, so I'm just going to kind of jump around, starting at verse 9. It says, when you're reaping your land, don't gather everything so that you can have some for the poor or for the foreigner. If I was poor and I knew that I can go to a vineyard where I'm able to actually sustain my life and get some food, I would be very grateful so that when I'm up and out and I have my own vineyard, I would like to do that for others. Or What's a principle? How can we translate that to make it applicable to us today for those of us who are not farmers? I would say... Money. Money. Okay. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's what transfers over. So you get your, your money from your job for the, the week that you work, the paycheck that you get, or the first paycheck of the year, or, you know, first fruits. That's how I would consider it is the, what comes in the, in the beginning of the year. Um, save some money on the side to give away to people who are less fortunate than yourself. Have a portion of your finances set aside for people who are in need. I think that's a beautiful principle that we can see in scripture. And that does translate monetarily into the New Testament. We see people monetarily giving to the poor in the book of Acts. So I'm not making up my own, I'm not, you know, transforming Leviticus 19, which is about food into money unrighteously no that's what we have today we have money and that's what they had in the book of acts that's what they had in yahushua's time even yahushua had a treasure who collected money money they had money that they collected a basket okay and guess who was the treasurer? the traitor the traitor was the treasurer okay so this stuff isn't like it isn't like man-made tradition okay it's good it's biblical so we need money to help people we need money to do things for the kingdom or things like not stealing or dealing falsely with one another or oppressing neighbors robbing them um cursing the death putting stumbling blocks before people there's things within the torah that are physically applicable to what yahush is talking about when he says like, why would he say this is uh, for this is the Torah and the prophets if it wasn't something that's concretely there of how to actually treat one another? Oh, that's uh, let's repeat that in case that was missed. Matthew 7, verse 12 says, therefore, whatever you desire for men to do to you, you shall also do to them. For this is the law and the prophets. For all my Christian listeners and all my Israelite brothers and sisters that need to rebuttal Christians, Torah lawlessness, 
This verse is letting you know that the law is not done away with. This verse right here is screaming out, I'm not done away with. Simply because by you doing unto others what you would have, uh, what you would have be done unto yourself, if that's still applicable today, that is just as applicable as the law and the prophets are today. Either that or it's not applicable anymore, but it is. And here my wife is going through the Old Testament, going through the law, going through the Torah of Moses to give you some application, which is beautiful. Go ahead. Uh, Exodus 21 all the way to 23, obviously I'm not going to read all those chapters, but there's things within there. If you do have servants, how to treat your servants. Um, if someone kidnaps, there's justice in there. You know, there's so many, how many children have been kidnapped, killed, but whatever the, I can't even imagine the things that happen. There's justice. Those people should be put to death. Um, there's just so, if men quarrel, what happens if someone hurts you and how they're supposed to actually help you heal if you, if you lose your profit, if you're, if you're not able to work, um, if you strike your servant. So there's different things within the, the Tanakh um, and within the prophets that show us how to actually walk that, walk that out. What does it look like to do unto your neighbor as you would do unto yourself? It's not just what we feel is good. Yahuwah has his standard that he would like for all men to have, so. Amen. I think that's good to end there. Uh, that was Matthew 7, verse 7 to 12. Shalom.